X11 has been around for a very, very long time. This year, it's going to be celebrating its 39th birthday. It was around before Linux even existed. But if you're paying even the slightest bit of attention to Linux, it would be no surprise to you to find out that Xorg development has been on the decline. And this isn't a recent trend. It has been this way since the peak in 2008. Now, I think there are two contributing factors to why that specific year is the year it peaked at. One of them you can probably guess. But this past year of 2022 was a historically low year for Xorg development. The last time it was this low was 19 years earlier in 2003. Now, 2003 is also a very special year for Xorg, but I'll get into why that is in just a bit. In 2022, there was a grand total of... 156 commits made to the master branch. And if I just compare it to the previous year of 2021, it looks a little bit worse because that year actually had a bit of a growth. In that year, there was 331 commits. But compared to 2020, 2022 is still lower. Either way though, it's very clearly trending downwards from the peak of 2,114 commits. Now, there's a couple of reasons why that particular year is the peak. Firstly, that is the year that Wayland hit the scene. So obviously Wayland hadn't picked up speed yet. After that point, a lot of that Exorg effort shifted over to the Wayland side. The other thing is why there is a big growth here. In these previous years, there was actually another X11 display server, that being X386. And in 2008, that's when the project finally died. So any of those remaining X386 developers, if they kept getting involved, would have been on Xorg instead. And it's not just less commits being made, it's also less code being changed. In 2022, there was 3,618 new lines added, with 888 removed. And in a vacuum, that seems perfectly reasonable. There's nothing that really seems weird there. But in 2021, with only double the commits, there was 31,400 new lines added, and 179,000 lines removed. Now, the reason why so much was removed is there was a lot of refactoring being done and things like that. That's not really a great indicator, but 31,000 lines being added. But to be fair, the last time the amount of commits were this low, the amount of lines added was really strange as well. Back in 2003, with 125 commits made, 865,000 new lines were added and 680,000 lines were removed. But especially at that point, the numbers can be really, really wonky because the project hadn't actually officially started. That wasn't until 2004. At that point, it was this weird little thing called X-Win managed by Keith Packard. I did a full video on the history of X11 and Xorg, I think a year or so back, but as a brief refresher, when Linux first started, the X11 server it had was X386. There were other little servers that some people might have been using, and they still do exist now, but X386 was basically in the spot of Xorg. It was the de facto standard that every distro was using, and Xorg started as a fork from that project. Up until 2002, everything seemed like it was going pretty much fine. That's when things started to go a little bit, a little bit haywire. So they locked down who could commit to the project, and Keith Packard, who'd been there since X11 was made at MIT, got booted from the project. He wasn't exactly a fan of this, so in 2003, as other people started to leave the project, he created XWIN. 
X Wing served as a place for everyone to discuss what they wanted to do with the future of X11 because it seemed like X36 wasn't going to be around for a while. And then in 2004, XORG was officially started as X386 decided to mess with the license and the new license was no longer GPL V2 compatible. And as XORG seemed like it was becoming a legitimate project, more and more people left X386, leading to this giant spike in development. Then Wayland came around, and then it went down again. But let's go back to the modern day. Not only is there a continuing drop in code and commits, there is also a continuing drop in committers. So in 2022, 32 separate email addresses committed code to Xorg, compared to 2021, of 48 people. Now with most open source projects, you have a set of core developers who do most of the work, and then other random developers coming in that maybe address some documentation, maybe address a bug or two here and there, but usually don't become a major contributor. However, the work they do is still incredibly important. On the bright side though, the number of committers isn't as low as 2003. In that year, there was 10 people. But as the project was still a part of X when it hadn't officially started yet, that's sort of to be expected. Also, a lot more people use Linux now, and it's a lot easier to get involved with the XORG project being on GitLab, so the barrier to entry is considerably lower. Also keep in mind, I'm just talking about the commits made to the XORG server, which also includes XWayland. If you want to include all of the little X applications being made that are part of the core XORG experience, there is a lot more commits being made. Some of these get updated fairly frequently. This one, for example, XInput, was updated three hours ago. And... Sure, it may not be the biggest project out there, it only has 269 commits. But if you go and add up everything involved in XORG, there's absolutely a lot more work being done. Okay, this is a bad example, there was four commits last year. But if you add up everything, there is definitely a lot more work being done. However, I think it's fair to say that basically more so than ever, XORG right now in all but name, is pretty much in maintenance mode. Now you can argue that it doesn't need to have a bunch of changes made, it's already as good as it needs to be, there's no problems with it, it addresses every use case that you could possibly want it to address. You can certainly make that argument, but I would say you probably have no idea what you're talking about if you had a read through any of the issues that are available. However, that's not to say that XORG is suddenly bad because it's not getting a bunch of commits made to it. What I do think is fair to say is that right now, XORG is probably in the best state it's ever going to be in. It's going to be sort of coasting along into the future with little bugs being addressed here and there, but not seeing any of these major development improvements that would have been seen in the past. And don't get me wrong, I am not blaming any of the XORG developers for this situation. There is simply not enough people interested in working on XORG. For all the noise that people make about XORG and how XORG is the only future for the Linux desktop, there is a severe lack of people actually getting involved in the project, trying to address things that need to be addressed, even just getting involved in the issues and replying to things that are being asked. There is hundreds upon hundreds of issues that didn't ever get a single comment. But even though we were in this transitionary period between XORG and Wayland, it doesn't mean that XORG is dead or XORG is going away anytime soon. I want a lot of these X applications that exist to live on long into the future. And one way that some of them are going to is through X Wayland. X Wayland is how you run these XORG applications under Wayland. And there's a lot of use cases still right now where there isn't a native Wayland application that does exactly what you need. Or maybe you're comfortable with a certain piece of software and don't want to use an alternative. You just want to keep using the same thing you were using. This is perfectly fine. And X Wayland, I don't see any reason why it would disappear. 
But the other reason why it won't go away is actually OpenBSD. OpenBSD doesn't use Xorg in the same fashion that you and I would use it. They actually use a set of modifications called Zenakara. Zenakara is the name for the version of X included in OpenBSD. It is currently on Xorg 7.7 and its dependencies. The goal of Zenakara is to provide a framework to host local modifications and to automate the build of the modular XOR components, including third-party packages and some software maintained by OpenBSD developers. It is not a fork. We are tracking XOR modifications and try to push back our changes whenever they're good for upstream too. Basically, it's like a lot of these Linux kernels out there where they take the kernel and then make a bunch of modifications to it, like pretty much any distro does. They are doing the same thing with Xorg, and it may come to a point where they are pretty much the only maintainers actually doing this. But even if that does happen, it doesn't mean the death of Xorg on Linux, because Hyperbola is actually using Zenakara as their main Xorg version. I don't know why they're using it, I haven't looked properly into it, but that's what they're using. However, I wouldn't be surprised if at some point there is a Wayland future on OpenBSD. Over on the FreeBSD side, there actually is Wayland support with things like WL Roots, and there is a Wayland compositor made specifically with FreeBSD in mind. You can use this over on the Linux side as well, I've not used it, but it seems at least functional. So where do you expect to see Xorg five or so years from now? My assumption is development is going to slow more and more and more and will consistently see under 100 commits per year. Any commits that do end up being made are probably going to be heavily focused around better support for X Wayland. But maybe I'm wrong and maybe we all give up on Wayland and go back to Xorg or possibly Arkin. I don't think even the Arkin supporters think that's going to happen. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And if you like this video, remember to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, Stanley Barrow Pay, linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brady on Games. That's going to be it for me. And I'm out.